Good afternoon, viewers of Seven News Television. Today is another day that the Almighty God has made us to say it is marvelous and wonderful in His sight. Your program experts, we are going to talk about certain things that people look at it very abnormal. Truly, it is abnormal. Others might think it is rare disease. It is known as cleft lips or palate. We have to find out what's really the cause or what are the causes of this disease. The treatment, the cause of oppression. With us at the studio, this expert or specialist who is going to talk about this is Madam Ashu Violet Dani Taku Mbiano, a real African for that matter, with so many names. Good afternoon, Badad. Good afternoon, sir. Um, we are talking about understanding and handling clefts, lips, and palates. Who is Madame Mbiano Violet Ashu? Thank you very much for inviting me into your studio. It is really a beautiful studio here. I am uh, the coordinator of small train for the CMAC zone. So I represent an NGO, an NGO that is based in the US. I represent it in the CMAC zone. Okay. Yeah. So you are talking of Smile Train, an organization based in the US. When you talk of a train, people think is this moving um, a locomotive. What is Smile Train? Smile Train is an international NGO based in the US, like I formerly said, that uh, deals with one unique pathology, cleft lips and palate. Okay. We, we reach out to children and adults yeah. that are born with malformation of cleft and palate. We do the repair, we do holistic, I just want to say we do the holistic approach of treatment. So after the surgery, we have orthodontic centers, we have speech therapies, it's a whole package. A whole package, as you rightly said. Yeah. That is really interesting. That's right. Madam, yes. you've talked of clefts, or cleft lips up and palate. Many palate. Cameroonians mm -hmm. don't know what cleft is all about. What is cleft? Cleft is a, a malformation like every other, like some children have club food and all of that. Okay. A child is born with the upper lip that is open. Maybe du during the course of the program, we will be showing them some images okay. because it's better to illustrate with images. So the child is born with the upper lip that is open. It could be left it could be right it could be bilateral all right so you have three types it could be the unilateral it could be the bilateral clip lips and then the palate is within it's now inside it's not visible until the child might open the mouth and it hinders respiration and a whole lot of things so it's actually a malformation so cleft lips is the one outside and the palate is inside the palate is inside so we have a soft and a hard palate Okay. Palette is inside. We you equally see it in the images. So when you talk of soft and hard palettes, can you let your viewers understand what is the difference between the soft and the hard one? You know, getting into that now will <laughs> you will warrant a whole lecture, which I don't think we have enough time on that. But medical experts understand that. Okay. The what I will use the layman way. I prefer to use the layman way to explain. That is better. That's better yeah. because it, it will avoid us getting into biological explanations that some people will not even understand. <laughs> yeah. So a child is born with the mouth. When the child opens the mouth, you see in between your throat like mine, if I open my mouth now, you see just how the tongue goes up and down. Yeah. But just they have a very broad hole All right. inside their throat from this level that goes right down okay and so it impedes their speech feeding and a whole lot of complications oh so what the, are the symptoms of someone who have a 
<laughs> the, sim- the yes. symptoms are very visible. It's not even like you say <laughs> you have malaria. I keep on. Maybe if we we started by showing them, they will understand faster. But nevertheless, we will get them. Okay. The symptoms are so visible. You see how you, good looking you are. Yeah. Your mouth is closed. You can articulate very well. But when you have a child born with a cleft, okay, instantly, you know something is wrong. I see. Because the upper, the two upper lips don't close. It will be open like that. And so for a baby that is so ignorant and innocent, the baby will be smiling joyfully. And then the more the baby oh smiles, the more the mouth gets open Opened. and the more frustrating the parents can become. So you see it, you see the physiognomy of your child. Okay. Open. So that's already a symptom. If you call you can call it a symptom. All right. An identification. All I right. better put it. How yeah. can you identify it? How can it? you identify it? That's right. That's, that sounds very interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, we are talking of something that uh, many viewers don't know about. This is what Madam Asho, Violet, Dani, Taco, Mbiano is talking about. Mm-hmm. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you have a case like this, just follow up. Even if you don't have, but know that a member of your family that's must have been affected or infected in one way or the other. Don't give up. There's still hope. So, can this be treated? Yes, that's a re- one of the main reasons why I am here to bring back hope to the families that think that it's a hopeless situation. Mm-hmm. For those that are financially really down that they think all hope is lost small train is there for them and even for those that even have the resources but they lack information all right you know when you are expecting a child to come up very beautifully and then at the end of delivery you have such a child even with money in your hands you get confused but my message this afternoon is that there is hope because with a simple surgery repair the child comes back as any <coughs> other normal child madam Bianyo yes Salitz, out of inquisity i want to find out what are the causes of clep lips and palate that's an interesting question every disease somehow somewhere has a cause okay uh clips is caused by genetic factors there are several factors aligned behind this pathology all right you have genetic factors we've come to discover like in asia in the grand north of many countries they have a certain lifestyle that uh provokes it they get in some get intermarried between their cousins and mm-hmm. so on so you see the genetic factor gets higher and so if you had a spouse and then getting married to and not his sibling okay it would definitely spark up the rate of clips different from another young man that gets married to a lady that they don't have it at all in their family that's one aspect other aspects women some women don't uh, follow up during prenatal consultations and then they take drugs that are not adequate during the first 90 days of a child's formation okay and so those drugs will cause a malformation somehow you know other and there are really many other causes lifestyle some people take smoking excessive wild alcohol those hot drinks mm-hmm. i don't know they call it like sometimes we did an interview in the grand north you discover a woman is taking wild tobacco is taking what they call what is arky what is whiskey all those type of things within the first 90 days, 90 of, days pregnancy, of pregnancy it's really mm-hmm. risky all right so nevertheless there are some women that have done all of the things that ought not to be done mm-hmm. and they still have a clip or a palate child what will you say so there is equally a natural pathology that can cause it that one i'll not get into it but then the <laughs> avoidable ones uh-huh. we should avoid them and how can we prevent this disease if you follow up what i just said mm-hmm. then you will know that 
if you have to buy like we are doing with uh, what we call the the, the, the sickle cell uh, awareness that we are doing yeah you will know that if you are AS you shouldn't get married to somebody who is SS, SS yeah that's already one way of preventing. preventing it okay so that's another just way we will say for the genetic factors please try to understand that you don't go between yourselves mm -hmm. so that's one aspect then the second aspect you have to follow up your treatment go to pre antenatal care mm -hmm. let the doctors give you the right drugs with the right age of your pregnancy do your echographies whatever the doctors will tell you follow and it will help you to have a normal child can we consider um, uh, cleft palates or cleft lips as uh, a rare disease in our country today i'm even beginning to think that it should be put among one of those diseases as uh, under the public health this is a rare disease that's right. right then that the, 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 the our authorities should start looking into that because over the years it has been like a meat factor okay they consider they put several factors behind it i've done many interviews question families that had such children and they will tell you oh the woman at the feet of this type of <laughs> animal you know all those type of things that are not uh, proven yeah medically Sociolog sociologically and medically wrong thank you yeah. she's very wrong they'll yeah. tell you when the woman was pregnant she saw somebody like this or she <laughs> ate this or she slept this posture all of those things they are wrong factors okay. we need to educate sensitize our people about that and what do i mean about laying emphasis on awareness and sensitization because up to this today this 25th day of January, in some areas in this nation, I don't want to go out of my nation, mm -hmm. they are still killing those children. Can you imagine that? Killing the children? Oh yeah, you deliver a child like that, and then the family cannot stand it because now they say it's, it's uh, attributed to witchcraft. witchcraft yeah. It's attributed to adultery. It's attributed to <laughs> all sorts of things that are not truth so if you don't do awareness and sensitize people that is a malformation like every other and it has a way out how are we going to cope so smiling is helping people to to put smile on their faces yeah when they talk of my train i thought it was a train that people just have to jump in and take me to do <laughs> but i came to realize that it's an organization that works yes. in order to put smiles on people's faces it's an, an organization that works an organization that is represented in more than 85 countries in the world you know so it's not only in cameroon like I rightly said, I represent just the CMAC zone. There are other, other uh, colleagues of mine that represent other uh, countries and other zones of the world. So That sounds very interesting, Madam Ashu, mm -hmm. Violet. Uh, if you want to caution some of the parents in some of the regions who still believe so much in the tradition and uh, eliminating these uh, young innocent children mm -hmm. what are you going to tell them mm, that's one one of the aspects that i've been working on okay i've been to the east i've been to the whole of the grand north i've been to the west i want to say i've been to every region of cameroon and i try to lobby with the chiefs I meet the SDOs, I meet the authorities, mm -hmm. and sometimes we try to hold meetings yeah, right. at different levels. And now we do now, we now educate them. We show them the images like you did before mm -hmm. of the children before and after the surgery. And now they, they are like, really? Mm -hmm. And then you then begin to discover that somebody did something Some fishy, fishy yeah. about his or her own child mm -hmm. and now is regretting 
that if I had just bore a little pain and kept this child, yeah. today the child would have received surgery. surgery. Oh my God. Do you see that? That's really so sounds that's beautiful. my fight. My fight is to sensitize every parent, every family in Cameroon, in the CIMAC zone, and then the world at large. Please don't kill these children. They are normal children that with a simple surgery and for free, of course. That's even another very interesting part. Smile Train does this surgery for the parents for free. So why shouldn't you give your child an opportunity to live when you can have free surgery? All right. Uh, I'll get back to you, madam. Viewers of Seven News Television, Karo Tepa has this report about rare diseases. Let's get what she has to tell us. Carol Tepa. Ces enfants aux côtés de leurs parents sont atteints par des maladies rares, aussi appelées maladies orphelines. Elles sont nombreuses et variées, pouvant affecter le système musculaire, squelettique, nerveux. Les maladies rares sont des maladies qui affectent un très faible pourcentage de la population dont sont déjà très mal connues. Ça, c'est la première des choses qu'il faut savoir. Maintenant, la plupart des maladies rares ne seront pas forcément curables. Mais par contre, on est capable d'accompagner l'enfant. Il n'existe pas un médecin seul pour s'occuper de ces enfants. Et ces enfants ont véritablement besoin d'une prise en charge lorsqu'on sait qu'en Europe, elle touche une personne sur 2000 et près de 60 millions en Afrique qui restent à ce jour délaissés et sans soins. Et la plupart des victimes sont des enfants. Elle est très spécifique parce que chaque enfant qui est ici est à un niveau d'évolution complètement différent, et le plus souvent avec une pathologie complètement différente. Donc dans le cas par exemple des infimités motrices cérébrales, qu'on appelle généralement les IMC, la prise en charge sera multidisciplinaire. Le neuropédiatre va faire son rôle parce que beaucoup de ces enfants vont faire des crises épileptiques qui vont être gérées par le neuropédiatre, mais il existe des problèmes physiques et fonctionnels qui sont ceux que nous adressons. Par exemple, l'enfant va avoir des difficultés à s'asseoir tout seul, à parler, à se lever, à marcher. Il va avoir des déformations du fait qu'il est incapable de contrôler son corps. À l'heure actuelle, on compte 6 à 7 000 maladies rares selon l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. L'enfant souffre d'une maladie rare. Bon, je ne peux pas... Bon, je peux dire qu'elle est trisonomique. C'est vrai que ce n'est pas facile. Mais pas, pas l'encouragement de, de mes camarades, de mes voisins. J'essaie de gérer par le mieux que je peux. Si presque toutes les maladies génétiques sont des maladies rares, toutes les maladies rares ne sont pas génétiques. Elles sont graves, souvent chroniques, parfois évolutives. Mais aujourd'hui, plusieurs centaines de ces maladies peuvent être diagnostiquées par un test biologique. Ainsi naissent de nouveaux espoirs avec les perspectives offertes par une politique européenne et les chercheurs qui partagent les résultats le font en réseau. Thanks very much, Tsepa Carol, for that report. It sounds really uh, heartbreaking and painful to see that innocent children who came to this world had to go such pains when they don't have the means of expressing themselves. But thank God for the specialists that we have in our country today who are out to help the underprivileged or the less privileged in the society. Because money is not everything that we need. Mm. Human relation is more important than your financial status or your bank account. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you're just switching on your TV set at this point in time and watching Seven News, this is your program, Experts. We are talking on understanding and handling cleft lips, including palate. With us, it's an expert. Madam Ashu Violet Taku Tanyin Biano, who is going to tell us more about that. Madam, you have just followed the report about rare disease and cleft lips and palate. 
is almost being included in the train of rare diseases. You as an expert, what do you advise a mother, a father, your sister who has a child with a rare disease? This is, you know, it is heartbreaking. Yeah. As for a parent like myself, for you to have a child with a difficult situation mm -hmm. is very challenging. My first word of counsel goes to tell the parents that don't lose hope. Mm. That God is well able and there is no impossibility with God. All right. I have seen that. And I've seen God does miracles in situations where we least expect it. <clears throat> and so when you keep your hope, like you rightly said, it's not all about money. Yeah. There are situations that money can truly do nothing. But when your hope remains positive, the hand of God will definitely transform it in a way you will least understand. <laughs> I see. You talk both like an evangelist. That sounds interesting. So we are talking of clear lips and palate. Mm -hmm. What are the psychological, emotional trauma that some of these parents go through? The traumas are enormous. I have met parents that have been divorced because they have a cleft child. Okay. The first thing is that you see either the man is accusing the wife of infidelity yeah. or the woman is accusing the man of infidelity the woman will tell the man we have never had this type of situation in our family so it's coming from you <laughs> you know such little disputes begin like a joke a joke that's true and before you discover it they have a, a challenge that's a child that is going through a difficult situation yeah. and then they are already fighting before long either the man abandons the woman with wow. the child or the woman abandons the man with the child depending on who takes it more serious because i've been able to reconcile situations where the man abandoned the woman and other situations where the woman abandoned the baby with the man mm. oh yes so to do what with the baby <laughs> and that the man should take the baby that they don't have such children in their family and she can't stand it because she's afraid to have another pregnancy to have another child like that okay so she abandons the man with the baby and goes back to her family so after small train we, we met such a child and then we we gave the surgery to the child and then the child came back and i took the picture of the child to the mother because we started doing now uh, i do other arrangement behind the background mm -hmm. not just after the surgery what do you do like you said when they are going through that you have to try to bring them on the table of negotiation to tell them no you didn't have to fight you had to put your heads together okay see now help us come what do you do mm. And the woman could not even recognize nice her son. Can that, you imagine that? That's good news, you know. Oh, yeah. And so it was like, at, she looked at the picture, she couldn't recognize the child. Right. So when I showed her the picture of her child before, the day she left the child, and she just burst into tears. Oh and she God. told me she doesn't know what to do next. I told her, your husband is just by the side. Can, are you ready to welcome him? She told me she, she, she's not sure the man is going to receive her back. I said, the man forgives your sins. Oh, and yes. that's why the man had to follow up and all of this. And such <clears> things, you know, we brought a reconciliation. And now they have two other beautiful children without clefts or palettes. And many more cases. <laughs> that is very interesting. Yeah. And, uh, I appreciate the work you guys have been doing. Thank you very much. Uh, the underprivileged and reconciling family. But most of times we lay blames on others without looking at or pointing fingers on ourselves. Mm -hmm. When you get up in the morning and you accuse your husband or your wife of this because a child is sick, mm -hmm. I think it's a really a grievous mistake. Yes, it's Since really we, yeah, grievous. Nobody is, uh, nobody is really God. You talked of uh, clep lips being uh, genetic. Is it hereditary as well? <laughs> that brings me to laugh a little you know genetic aspects are hereditary okay already if you will start talking about genetics okay you then know that four generations after something can just be there very quiet but then it's in the genes and you come up one day okay that's why some people when i do interviews does your father have this or did you ever see anybody in your family having this other families one person will remember that their grandmother 
or their great grandfather had it. Okay. You can now see how it steps down. The other second generation didn't see, the third generation didn't see, and the fourth generation is seen, or a second generation. So, genetic factors. I yeah. heard it. Oh yeah. If their 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 grandfather or their four grandfathers had it, they did not kill him, right? I can very much answer <laughs> that because there are those that were killed and those that they were not killed, so we could at least see them. They saw them. If they saw their grandfathers, means their grandfather was not killed. Definitely. So what is pushing them to think that the newborn baby they are having is a uh, is is attacked by a witch or a wizard? You know, this usually comes up after many family confrontations. All right. After many family, especially for families that two generations have really never seen it. All right. And then, unfortunately, again, there are not people who are inquisitive that must have maybe seen it through a poster like this or as we are on TV right now. Some people have really never, ever seen a child like that. Yeah. And suddenly they have such a child, and they have never done any inquiry in their own family. How would they know about it? Problems will stem up. After the problems stem up, then talking members of the family will start doing a tracing, All like right. they call it in the legal terms. They will do a tracing, and somebody will tell you, your great grandfather had this, and it start dawning on you like, hey, let me check myself. So that's why it's not very always good to be quick to throw stones at the other person. Okay. That's my word of advice. You talked of uh, cases whereby the mother did not follow up her prenatal consultation. Have you ever experienced a case whereby a woman went through the prenatal consultation and still have a situation like this? Yes. I've actually, there are so many cases, like the, the surgery we did yesterday, you could see that it's a well-to-do family. And that was their third baby. Okay. And so she didn't miss even any of her prenatal consultations. All right. Nevertheless, she had a baby girl with a clebs and a palate. Wow. Yes, the baby came with even the two, so you can imagine the trauma she the went trauma through. The trauma she went through. And she knows that she took all her drugs, she did everything. She couldn't explain and she had never seen anybody like that before. In such cases, like I said in my intro, there are situations that we will not be able even to explain because God will take the supreme place because probably he has a way he wants to glorify his name yeah. in that family, you know. Oh, let's talk about the environmental aspect of people suffering from cleft lips or palates. How can the environment influence such diseases? If I have to mention environment, I will, without um, stigmatizing any region or anybody, with the statistics and interviews that we've done, yeah. I take the case study of Cameroon. The Grand North, dif different from the, the, the center and the littoral, they have different lifestyles. Okay. You can affirm with me that their lifestyles are different. And so there are pathologies that comes up as a result of lifestyle. That if you can change that lifestyle, some diseases will not affect you. Evident is that there are some diseases in other regions more prevalent than others. That's true. That's it. So with such diseases about environment, if you can work out and know that because I do this or because I eat this or because I take this, that's one of one of the causes and then you stop it then you'll be reducing the risk factor if somebody lives in a forest zone mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. and another person lives in an arid area mm -hmm. which of this environment is more prone to have the cleft clips or palate mm -hmm. As of now, I won't want to answer erroneously. We are still working. We have experts on that. 
But I have not yet gotten into that comparative factor that I'll give you statistics right here. Okay. Nevertheless, in my next time when I'll be here with you, I think I would have gotten enough information from our database because I'll equally take this up for our researchers to work on that. And I think it will do all of us good. Can somebody who has been born naturally without any problem suddenly develop such a complication? No. I like that question very particularly. To identify a cleps and a pallet child, it is very simple. Okay. One question, were you born with it or you acquired? Acquired. If the person tells you, I had an accident, mm. I fell, I did this, then it's not a clip. It's, okay. it's another pathology to be handled differently. All right. Like when we go on outreaches, our mobilizers sometimes before, they will bring normal patients. But normal patients are not cleps patients because normal patients, they are born normally. All right. And then an infection that was neglected begin to eat out the mouth of the child or the adult. Mm. So what we are talking child, 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 it's not just about the child. We operate the children and adults, adults. alike. So you see an adult with an open mouth or a mouth that has been eaten up to this level that acquired it. So if you acquired it through an infection, through an accident, it's not a cleft. You talk of acquiring it. How can that be possible? Sexually? Uh, no, 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 no. What I mean is that cleps and or palate, or the two, are not acquired. Okay. They are born with. with. On a very straight line. Right. The child is born with it. The very first day in the hospital, you will see that mouth open. Thanks very much, Madam Ashu, Thank for you. answering that question. Viewers of Seven News Television, at this point in time, Brice Gossok is going to tell us more about the Italian government trying to assist Cameroonians in improving the dental profession in our country. Brice Gossok, let me get what you have. Une trousse de chirurgie de médecine bucco-dentaire contenant des daviers, des élévateurs, des pinces pointes aiguilles et même des turbines. Une exposition qui plante bien le décor du partenariat tissé entre les experts italiens de Delta Tech et Africa Health Group, venu ce mois de novembre dans cette salle d'un hôtel de Yaoundé, présenté devant Mama Fouda, ministre de la Santé, le savoir-faire qu'il devrait mettre à la disposition de l'Association des chirurgiens dentistes du Cameroun au cours des deux jours de formation que devrait durer cette rencontre. On commence à développer trois différents programmes. Il y a un programme de formation qui s'appelle Dental Academy, c'est-à-dire qui on vient ici. Ce que je veux remarquer, c'est que pour la première fois, les opérateurs de Cameroun ne sont pas obligés de se déplacer hors du Cameroun pour recevoir de la formation, mais ce sont nous qui sommes venus ici pour les retrouver. Une expertise que n'a pas manqué de saluer les différents représentants diplomatiques des deux États présent lors de ce regroupement. Et je souhaite donc plein succès à ces travaux et surtout également plein succès à ce partenariat où je vois qu'il y a plusieurs portes qui vont s'ouvrir au fur et à mesure. Je voudrais avant toute chose remercier le ministre de la Santé pour continuer avec sa présence cet important événement organisé par Africa Health Group avec le soutien de l'ambassade d'Italie. Mon pays est particulièrement honoré des efforts et de la confiance que le Cameroun et que le gouvernement camerounais lui demandent chaque jour. Une convergence de vues des autorités à la fois camerounaises et italiennes qui ouvre ainsi un nouveau prisme dans les soins dentaires de qualité que devraient bénéficier les millions de populations du Cameroun en proie à de nombreux maux de dents. Thank you very much, Brice Kozak. I believe uh, with all the training and expertise from the Italian government, our dentists, we have a lesson they have learned and uh, put in practice or make good use of the equipment that have been given them. 
the words of Seven News, we are moving step by step to the end of this program. If you're just switching on your television as a point of reminder, we are discussing on understanding and handling clip lips, including palettes, in the Cameroonian society. And experts so witty and intelligent with so many names has decided to join us today. She's no other person than Madame Violet Asho Tani Taku Mbiano. Madam, once again, <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome to Seven News. Thank you very much, Mr. Bissong. I see you love those names so the, much, like I do myself. The, 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 <laughs> names, the, the, the name is just like a sentence. That's why I, I have to laugh about it because I it takes God my for time. my parents, you know, everybody <laughs> was pulling the blanket on his own side. <laughs> That's good. You are talking of, about uh, cleft lips and palates. Mm -hmm. How we talk about surgery? Who are those involved in carrying out the surgery? In Cameroon, we have partner hospitals that we work in collaboration with. They are called Small Train Partners. All right. In uh, Yaoundé, we we have uh, Ashgopi, as they call it, Yaoundé Gynecological Hospital. and Pediatric yeah. Hospital. is one of our partners. We have professors that are there that do does the surgery. In uh, uh, Yaoundé Central Hospital is another partner. Okay. And then we equally have private partners. We have a We Care Foundation. It's a private uh, entity found in uh, Simbok. We have partners in Douala, uh, Hospital Clinic Bethesda. Yeah. And then we have the Bingo Baptist Hospital, Hospital as another partner. We have more partners. So each time you are in any region, in Cameroon, we will give you the numbers to contact. You don't need to leave one region to another. to another because in all the 10 regions, we are represented. You talk of bingo. Is it the one at Kumbu or um, a branch in Douala? Yeah. Uh, bingo, the, we have a partnership with the main branch, the mother branch in bingo. Okay. And so their surgeons go to all their other partners. We are very strict about safety protocol All right. because we don't want any child to get into the theater and does not come back alive. So we, we work with hospitals, with very good theaters and surgeons that have been tested and trusted. And so those are small trained surgeons. Before you become a partner, another small trained surgeon have to give you a hands-on training again. Okay. You work with them. So the bingo in Kumbo, they are doing surgeries. The one in Douala, they are doing surgeries. The one in Mutengene, they are doing surgeries. When you talk of tested and trusted, you made mention of the fact that the operations or the surgeries are free. Yes. What are you forgetting from it? Doing free surgery when we know many people complain that Cameroon is a difficult country to live in. <sighs> There is always, a, uh, I'm one of those that believe in divinity and the hand of the Lord. And the, I believe that there is always a way out in every situation. There is no situation that will not have a way out if only you can love humanity. Yeah, all right. Because you only, God will use only humanity to reach out to humanity. That's true. For example, some people never knew that small train is in Cameroon and is doing surgeries for free. Mm -hmm. Thanks to this program, many people are going to be aware. They can call from any part of the world now and they will save one or two of their relations. So, when we say free, <laughs> free is for the patients. All right. Somebody <clears throat> somewhere pays for it. Somebody like you and I, okay. that have a good heart, a humanitarian heart, that sees into it like, okay, I want to sponsor one child, I want to sponsor two children, and then there are appropriate um, means and measures that the uh, NGO has put in place for that. The rest of it, we do a compensation to the surgeons. 
but the patients, the parents come and receive surgery for their children, their husbands, their wives, their whosoever for free. You just walk into any partner hospital, they register you, they do you your surgery, they give you your basic drugs, all with the drugs are a package of free. Goods. If I would like to find out from you, madam, you said people like us do pay for the surgery. Are they Cameroonians? Are they Americans? Are they Europeans? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Goodwill people are from all over the world. Uh -huh. There are goodwill people goodwill ambassadors in Cameroon mm -hmm. small train sending in if you log into our website you see where you can have even the basic minimum you can ship in $50 25 200 10,000 and so forth and so on mm -hmm. so people from all over the world that are humanitarians and have a heart to save a life mm -hmm are open to go to our website and do their donations. We do fundraisings. We do many other ways of raising funds to help the surgeries being done. Before the surgery, who are those involved in carrying out the operation? Before the surgery, you're already involved. I will begin with you. Okay. You are already creating what we call awareness and you are sensitizing people. All right. Once somebody will be aware now, the person will definitely either go to uh, Ashgopi, will go to Wiki Foundation, to whichever partner, wherever they find themselves. And when they get to that hospital, they will get to the consultation department yeah. and they'll send them to the ENT department of the hospital that take charge of that. And then it goes like every normal procedure of surgery. It takes its course until okay. you get to the block and every other person that is supposed to go to, to to be part of the surgery will be involved who are those in the operation block that is what i want to learn i want to know definitely there are surgeons okay we have surgeons we have uh, plastic surgeons all right that are our partners mm -hmm. like uh, the partner of uh, we care foundation is a plastic surgeon all right we have uh, ent surgeons we have pediatric surgeons so we have general surgeons that have been doing the work already we have nurses good so it's a team <laughs> i call it it's a team if you have ever witnessed uh any operation in yeah. the block it's a team it's not one person the nurse has his part the instrumentalist has his part the anesthesias <coughs> and everybody is a whole team what is the role of a pediatric dentist when carrying out an operation you know, look at this child. You are, you are a very intelligent journalist. A pediatric dentist, look at this child. Yeah. We try to, to catch them and treat them young. Yeah. Before they get to see how she's smiling. But you see that the, the dental is not rightly pleased. Mm -hmm. The part of the dentist will be there now. The dentist will have his own part to play to balance up with all her own activities that she has to carry on. So that's why I said that we have a holistic treatment approach. You are getting me now more, more convinced that uh, you are doing some wonderful work that there, oh. out there. Um, uh, you are doing the surgery for free. Mm -hmm. What in a case, let's say, how much will it cost an individual if the treatment it's not for free. How much? Estimatedly? Mm. Billions? Millions? Thousands? Hundreds of thousands? I wouldn't really want to get into that <coughs> because I work with an NGO and my NGO does the surgeries for free. Therefore, I am more concerned about reaching out to people to come receive it for free. Nevertheless, every hospital uh -huh. has a standard protocol okay clinics uh, government hospitals can't have the same prices all right so i believe that from that perspective 
the, if you go to five clinics, if you go to five uh, referral hospitals for the same pathology, you discover with me that you have five different prizes. Even the experts that have to do you the, the surgeries, according to their trainings, according to their whatever, they have their different prizes. I won't be the one to do that. Each parent that will not be able to benefit through smile train, they will be better placed to give us their comparative factors. Mm -hmm. Give you comparative factors mm -hmm. of prices. Of prices. That's right. You talked of some drugs. Mm -hmm. What type of drugs do you give your patients? After every surgery, normally you need even anti anti inflammatory drugs, painkillers. There are just basic drugs, painkillers, and fast healing drugs that we give to the patients. It's a simple surgery. And where do you get your drugs from? We <laughs> we, we we supply. We work with uh, standardized pharmacies. Okay and pro pharmacies that supply to the hospitals mm -hmm. so it is a hospital that's why we work with the partners we work with legalized sanitary institutions mm -hmm. so we don't get drugs from the roadside we work with if you have to go consult in opita central you know you get good drugs from their pharmacy and, and so on what's the role of uh, a general counselor before your surgery it is really very important general counseling prepares the the parents prepares the individual for some at some already adults yeah. for those that are minors like the one we have here we okay. have to talk with the parents these are all minors all right so you see I, we have to get to a counseling session with the parents to give them confidence all right in spite of the fact that this child has this open mouth okay i will use it that way just a layman way yeah i bet you the parent will not want you to go into the theater and bring a lifeless child before them do you know that yeah i know so we have to reassure the parents mm -hmm. that we are giving their children the utmost best okay and that we are taking this child in and bring them a better child a few minutes hours after so we tell them like a woman that goes to deliver and can deliver and they have to do a cesarean section it, it has to be done okay so how many patients has my trained operated for free when you mean that's a very broad <laughs> spectrum yes, question i know okay we, we will love we want many people to visit our page if you want to know the statistics worldwide you get to our database you get worldwide statistics if you want to get it nation by nation if you want to get it continent by continent you get it but in cameroon yeah i bring it now down to cameroon, cameroon yeah we are above 4,000 children that we've already operated for free. 4,000 children for how long? An adult. An adult. Okay. I want to talk just during the period where I've been working for the past four, going to five years. Mm -hmm. Before now, a few surgeries were done, a hundred plus, and so on. So in Cameroon and the CEMAC zone, we are close to 5,000 free surgeries. Thanks very much. Thank you. Viewers of Seven News Television, it is quite an interesting thing to know that you guys are over there watching with us. We are having an important topic that many people might neglect. As Madam Ashu Violet Riley says, there are situations that people take it is out of witchcraft, infidelity, but that is not true. It is a normal malformation of these children during the pregnancy period of the mother. We are going to dive into what Kalis is going to talk about, the rare diseases.
So, Kalis, uh, we would like to get from you what the rare diseases is all about. Cet enfant assis sur un fauteuil roulant, malgré son sourire, fait partie des enfants atteints de maladies rares. Nombreux sont-ils accompagnés de leurs parents qui sont venus prendre part à Yaoundé à la campagne de sensibilisation et d'évaluation des maladies rares. Il convient de mentionner que cette opération d'évaluation et sensibilisation est l'œuvre de l'Association pour l'encadrement des enfants victimes de maladies rares, entendez à Sevima et la Fondation Franja. Promouvoir la, comment je peux dire, euh, cette euh, affection qu'un parent peut se ressentir vis-à-vis -vis de son enfant malade malgré ses différences physiques. Et puis, euh, entre autres choses, il est question de faciliter, enfin, de, 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 de faire accepter l'enfant atteint de maladie rare par l'opinion public d'abord et puis par la famille également qui vit avec l'enfant. Les deux associations préalablement évoquées ont permis aux enfants venus sur le lieu de la cérémonie de recevoir gratuitement les soins prodigués par des mains expertes qui ont eu pour effet de redonner du sourire et de l'espoir aux parents ainsi qu'aux enfants victimes de maladies rares. Nous accompagnons l'association Astevima dans le cadre de ses activités pour la porte de Noël. Nous sommes, je suis le président d'une associ, association de neuroréhabilitation néromodiste qui est donc partenaire d'ACVMA et qui joue le rôle de consultant pour l'association ACVMA. Étant donné que c'est une association qui s'occupe d'enfants victimes de maladies rares, dont pour la plupart les maladies sont des maladies neurologiques, euh, notre association étant spécialisée dans le domaine neurologique et la neuroréhabilitation, donc nous remplissons dans le rôle d'expertise pour eux. Le moins qu'on puisse dire de cette expérience Vécu par les enfants et leurs parents et qu'elle recèle d'un intérêt sanitaire, c'est un et important. Thanks very much, Kalis, for that report. Viewers, like I earlier said, we have moved almost few minutes to the end of this program. But before we draw the curtain close, We would like to give uh, our specialists, Madame Violet Asho, I will not call all the names now, to say something about cleft lips. So when is your next operation? Today even we have surgeries being carried out in partner hospitals. Surgeries are carried on in different hospitals according to their surgery days. Okay. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Wednesdays, depending to which partner you draw yourself closer to. And we have outreaches. We will be having an outreach in uh, Ngaundere. We'll be having an outreach in uh, Garoa. We'll be having an outreach in uh, in the Mutengene. All of this in the month of February in the different regions. So wherever you find yourself get closer to the nearest partner of small train and your child your sister is going to have their pathology repaired thanks very much madam ashuvalet tani taku mbianyo for coming i hope next time you're not uh, you're very smart with our invitation i should be the one to be thanking you and uh, a last word is that join us on seven news to spread the awareness and sensitization about clefs and palate that it is free and that please they shouldn't kill these children for us anymore thank you thank you very much uh, <coughs> madam violet tanibiano viewers of seven news television i am happy with people over there watching at us <laughs> i love being here for you guys but unfortunately because of time, we cannot continue. It will be very ungrateful for me to end this program without appreciating the work of the technicians like Marcia Kwakam, Stefan Mbala, Guy Fena, and the editors as well. We love you all. God bless you. Don't go away. 
as Top Elite Plus is coming next in our program.